good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to this uh, second conference uh, in this series dedicated to Seoul, the city of Seoul. Um, today, I have the great pleasure uh, to welcome Dr. Kim Hyeong, who uh, is presently associate researcher at the UCL archives located in the Ecole Normale Supérieure uh, in Paris, in, in France. Um, Dr. Kim will talk about a very interesting topic entitled We as Self, Udi in Korean. Um, I will briefly introduce our guest picture, uh, speaker. Dr. Kim uh, holds a BA and an MA in philosophy from Korea University, and she uh, um, got a PhD uh, at the Institute of Philosophy from the Freie Universität Berlin in Germany. Um, she has uh, just published a monograph entitled We Are Self Uli Intersubjectivity and Presubjectivity, published by Lexington. It was just published uh, this year, 2021. And uh, this guest lecture is basically based on this uh, monograph. Um, we will have approximately one hour and 30 minutes, uh, more or less, of, of presentation. And then I will give the floor to the audience so you have the opportunity to ask questions to our um, guest speaker. Dr. Kim, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. And uh, without any further ado, we will give you the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for being here. And I'm very happy to be able to share um, what I have been working on for the last three years. And I'm going to share the screen so you can see the PowerPoint. That's it. All right, does everybody see the screen? Okay, nobody can answer because everybody's muted. I yes. hope, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, the title as uh, Professor Gabone um, introduced is We as Self, Uri in Korean. Uri, uh, very briefly, it just means we or our or us in Korean. And uh, I mean, we talked about it very briefly just between us first, uh, why it's spelled as Uri. Uh, it's because I felt like Uri um, spelled like this, it's more of a French way of spelling, I would say, it could give a better visual intuition uh, to the word Uri in Korean because it looks kind of like our, and also uh, it's uri, so it's, it fits the French pronunciation pretty well. So I spelled uh, uri uh, as uri like this. So um, I'm, oops, all right, all right. So today I'm going to talk about self and other and philosophy and language. And what do I mean by that? I mean, there are some questions that I want to work on with you. So first question is, is there a universal way of understanding self? And the second question is, is there a language or certain culture that is more suitable for philosophy? Um, this question is important, especially because although you have read the introduction of this lecture, when uh, you expect a philosophy lecture on Korean philosophy, I would imagine that normally, and not that there's anything wrong with that or wrong with you, but normally nowadays, uh, when you talk about Korean philosophy, you talk about Korean philosophical uh, philology. So you expect to hear something about Yi Huang, Yi Yi, like uh, Korean philosophers, um, uh, not from mostly the current time, but uh, the Korean philosophers who worked on mostly Confucianist philosophy and so on and so forth a long time ago. And that's not what I'm going to do. That's not what I'm going to talk about necessarily today. So that's why I have to clarify uh, what I'm going to talk about and why I deal with this within the realm of philosophy and Korean philosophy. So these are the two questions that you want to keep in your mind. So um, I said, we're going to see and talk about how we understand self and other and philosophy. 
especially in relation to language and culture. So in our modern uh, Western or Westernized world, we understand self as subject, an autonomous individual. And this is one way of understanding self at the current time in the metropolitan world. So most of us who um, right now who um, were able to have access to Zoom and this meeting uh, living in the metropolitan world and right now we're sharing this time, we understand self as subjective, autonomous individual, naturally, even though we don't think about it all the time, or maybe you never heard of it, but that's uh, like a standard way of understanding self uh, now. Um, but there are some problems caused when self is understood only as subject. And this is what I say, uh, not everybody says that it's problematic if self is understood only as subject. But I see some problems and I think uh, lots of people start to see that it is problematic if we, if we consider self only as an autonomous uh, individual subject. Because, especially because um, if self is only an autonomous individual, then we have a problem of um, we, the we-ness, how we understand we. Because if self is an autonomous individual, then we uh, can be just a collection of individuals. But we can be more than that, I think. And um, within this system, philosophical system of understanding self as an autonomous individual subject, it is very hard to find another way to talk about we, what we understand uh, when we say we, or what is we, what are we. Um, so this I-centered, uh, I subject centered understanding of self is not bad. I'm not saying that it's something terrible that we have to get rid of, but it's incomplete. Meaning if it's considered as the only way of understanding self, oops, then it's not enough, like I said already. So as a philosopher from Korea, which means I speak Korean, uh, I was asking myself if there's another or alternative way of understanding self in Korean. But this another or alternative way uh, and the understanding of self as subject are not mutually exclusive, meaning that this even if there's an alternative or another way of understanding self that I uh, could um, analyze or understand from the Korean language and culture, that doesn't mean that I, um, I think that's another only way of understanding self. But also, I don't want to talk about uh, Korean culture and language in this philosophical discussion, not just as um, talking about cultural stereotypes, such as, uh, you know, you've all heard of community culture of Asia and individual culture of Europe, you know, this is um, a stereotype that a lot of people are familiar with. So um, when you hear the the topic uri we in korean or in asia oh yeah i know i know what you're going to talk about you're going to you're going to talk about this community culture of asia that is very different from the individual culture of europe but these these courses are done a lot of times very superficially and not philosophically enough i i would say so um 
I'd like to see with you today how the concepts of self were developed in Western philosophy and how these concepts are rooted in language and how non-European languages understand the self. And especially today, how, philosoph how to think, uh, philosophically think about the we in Korean in this context. Uh, so first I will briefly uh, talk about some technical things, uh, how uh, self as subject, the concept of self as subject was developed in Western philosophy first. Uh, so it's gonna be a little technical, but hopefully um, it's not too boring. So I talk about this because I want to show you that it is also one way that we developed a certain group of people and at a certain time developed to understand self, understand human being, understand ourselves. So uh, you probably have seen uh, this picture. This guy is called Descartes and uh, he's famous for this cogito ergo sum meaning I think, therefore I am. I show you this first because this is very important in our modern time where we understand ourselves as uh, individual subject. So, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. So here, I think is important because this represents subjectivity, the idea of subjectivity, meaning that I am a thinking subject, I, that is self. And not only Descartes, but also another famous guy in Europe uh, who is famous for his idea uh, of ich gleich ich, I equals I. So his name is Johann Gottlieb Fichte. He's a German philosopher who uh, founded German idealism. And this is also, um, this shows also the core idea of subjectivity in European or Western philosophy. Um, I equals I means, you know, I am I basically. Like, so it is so clear. So it sounds almost trivial. And uh, yeah, I am I like, but that is um, a very, this is a very uh, core structure of understanding subjectivity of I. And uh, because and in this structure, uh, we see uh, the ideas of identity and difference, uh, such as I as subject and I as object, meaning that you know, how can I know that I am I? How can I call myself I? You know, in this uh, structure already, I call myself I, I see myself as I. So you see this uh, division of the subjective I and the objective I. I have to be able to see myself as I to be able to call myself I. So this is uh, an important, um, a theoretical structure to um, understand how we have the concept of I. So here we already uh, have the problems, have dealt uh, with the problems, uh, subject, object, and self as subject, meaning self as thinking subject, and also object as of subjective perception. So subject object structure is the core and also the problem of this um, self as subjective individual understanding. Because um, this shows the, this leads us to our understanding of me as I and you, thou, who is not me as another subject. So I thou structure is in the base of this problematic. So I thou is self versus another self. 
subject versus another subject, but also subject versus an, versus object. Because self as thinking subject is conscious. A subjective self or an, a subject is conscious. And that is very important for a subject to be a subject. And being conscious is always being conscious of something. And of something, this of something points at the object of my subjectivity. So here, we, how can we understand we in this structure? In this structure, we is I, because I am in the center of this structure, and you are mm, outside of this I equals I structure. So you're not me, you're not I, you're thou. And we is I plus you, I plus another I. So we here is a collection of multiple, at least two individual subjects. In other words, combination of one eye and another eye. And this is why uh, we talk about we in terms of intersubjectivity, because there are multiple subjects. It's between different subjects. And this is a standard way of understanding we-ness in relation to understanding self and other in our uh, ma modern world or Western philosophy, modern Western philosophy. And I briefly talked about it already, but the problem ca is caused when I as conscious subject and another I also as conscious subject encounter. So you see that I am I and you are you as I as well, and I am a conscious subject and you as well. But yeah, and I admit that you are another conscious subjective self, yourself, but also you are uh, an object of my perception. And I am also an object of your perception. So we have this problem to talk about in this system. And there are many different people who talk about and try to deal with this problem in many different creative ways. But, but I'd like to say that maybe we can also talk about, there's an, talk about another way uh, to understand we. Uh, meaning that we could be more than just a collection of eyes. Um, so uh, there are already studies like, um, we don't have to always just talk about uh, consciousness and a conscious uh, subject as self, but um, especially the people who study psychology and cognitive science sciences, uh, who study feelings and things like that, they talk about corporeal attunement, and, I mean, and philosophers too, and intercorporeality and corporeal communication between two agents and and so on and so forth. They all sound very complicated, those big words, but it means that when we interact with another self, there's um, there are many different ways of interaction. So the conscious um, way of interaction is not the only way of interaction, meaning that um, there are also ways that are pre-reflective meaning that still um, you're a conscious being, but you're not re interacting consciously. Uh, you don't reflect when you interact with another person. For example, they talk about like when you uh, pass by somebody um, in a very narrow um, corridor, for example, and you don't know that person, you just want to pass by. Uh, then you don't have to discuss, you know, how to pass each other. You just, and you, it doesn't even take that much longer than like a few seconds or even less than a few seconds. You just know how to uh, interact with a person, like physically, you know, you just uh, 
turn a little bit and you don't have to say like, oh, please move your arm a little bit like that way so I don't touch you and we don't touch each other. But you, you don't discuss verbally or you don't do it consciously like in the way that you think of like a subjective self is interacting with, the an with another person. But this kind of interaction happens all the time and psychologists like talking about um, mother and baby interaction and but not only mother and baby but like in everyday life like this is how we interact with other people all the time so philosophers have talked about this too so interaction and co-being uh, not always based on our conscious activity of as a self as subject so they call it Call, uh, they talk about this in the context of embodied self and feelings and so on. But uh, so there are people also in um, uh, philosophy and psychology and cognitive sciences that uh, who um, insist that this individual uh, subjective self is not prior to the witness. And they insist that we is prior to this individual uh, subjective self. So individual subjectivity comes from we. For example, Chris uh, Freyth uh, insists, he's a, a cognitive scientist. He insists uh, the primacy of the witness over uh, the individual or individuality of uh, subject or subjectivity. Um, but I, I'm thinking maybe there's even another way uh, where we don't have to insist on primacy of anything, but maybe we can say individuality of self is already there. Uh, not that it, it's not there, but it has to come out of we, but it's already there with or in the presubjective we. But this presubjective we is not, not, not something that we create by collecting um, different individuals. And I insist that each one of us is already self in relation. So no primacy of either the conscious thinking individual self or the we. And I think this could be a theoretical, a new uh, theoretical framework of understanding self and other. And based on how, um, based on what uh, I insist this, I'm going to show you that, um, that uh, I, how I came to this, um, understanding of self from a different perspective. Uh, it was the language, like I said, that I speak Korean, which I didn't really think about so much before. Um, but, you know, I not only speak English and German and some other languages, but I speak Korean. And it matters, right? Because language reflects the diversity of human life and understanding based on its diverse human cultures and societies. So I wrote here, if someone believes that women cannot think philosophically just as birds, cannot fly, uh, birds can fly, but human beings cannot, or women can give birth, but men cannot, it would be also possible to believe that only some languages are suitable for philosophy and some are not. This is not what I think, but it's, it's there. It's not, um, it's not my imagination that uh, a lot of people seem to believe that they're a certain culture or a certain language is more suitable or only uh, for philosophy. But by saying I, I'm affirming the identity between the reflecting and the reflected subject and the act of saying I and saying we it's not just saying a word that is determined to signify an object. The simple ordinary word I comes with the scope of understanding self and other and the way and, and the other ways that I that I is said in different cultures in different times reflect the way 
the self and other are perceived and comprehended there at that moment. So here, how can I deal with this problem? Not as translating philosophy, like meaning that based on, for example, this uh, German idealism, I try to uh, fit uh, some Korean language uh, Korean, Korean words or Japanese words, I don't know, other words within the system and try to compare, like not just doing this or like uh, traditional anthropology has been doing their task, you know, basically translating other cultures to the West so the West uh, can understand or the other cultures can be uh, comprehensible for the West. Uh, here, obviously, the West functions as the ultimate reference to all this understanding. But how can I do this? How can I philosophically investigate and pose questions in uh, my own linguistic and cultural world? Because I do believe that philosophy is universal, but philosophy is not culture indifferent. Because we start thinking about ourselves from the standpoint where we're standing. And the sensitivity of philosophy lies right here. So to think about self and other, I started thinking about the who words in Korean, for example. That's where I started. And there are some interesting things that I uh, found out. For example, the word tagi in Korean, it literally means self. But self is usually, um, you know, self, I. But this word chagi is used as not only as the first person singular, but the second and the third. And also this word tangshin. Uh, there are a few uh, forms of uh, you in Korean, but it's one of them. And this literally means you. You can translate tangshin as you. It's a direct translation or thou. But this word is also used as not only the second, but also as the third person singular pronoun in Korean. So that's kind of odd. I mean, it's interesting, but how can I deal with this? And another thing that I put more uh, focus on was this. 우리 남편, or 우리 신랑, or 우리 um, wife, our husband. Uh, this is a very common way of saying my husband in Korean. Um, just for um, those of you who uh, don't speak Korean or don't know anything about Korean culture and language, uh, husbands are not shared. <laughs> Um, I have one husband, and most people have one husband. They're not shared, but hardly nobody says my husband, unless, I don't know, like you fight with someone and over your husband and like, hey, this is my husband, you know, finger off, you know. It's, well, then you would probably say my husband or may maybe some other cases, but most of the time it's our husband, 우리 남편. And that's very odd. And um, you could have just been, I don't know, thinking to yourself, oh, that's interesting, that's odd. That's just another way of, uh, very peculiar way of um, saying things in Korean. But instead of just thinking that, I wanted to think about this philosophically. And that's where I um, got the ideas of, another way of understanding the witness. So what uh, can we, what can we uh, understand or talk about in this phenomenon uh, of saying our husband, 우리 남편? I think, I thought that this witness expressed in our husband could probably, uh, do something more than a self-centered understanding of the we, meaning that not as a collection of individuals, 
I mean, the we as not as a collection of individuals or a selfless one. For example, I told you about this uh, witness that is um, before the division of I and Tao, for example, uh, the, the witness that is prior to the individuality of a subject, uh, that is the witness that is before any division. So that is kind of a selfless, uh, like a, a chunk of like an anonymous whole where I uh, is not yet um, separated from you. But I didn't like that either fully. I mean, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's one idea, but not neither of this, but maybe it could say something that's different, which I thought uh, as pre-subjective witness. Uh, and this pre-subjective witness, I say, is based on our pre-subjective relation with one another. And what do I mean by relation? By this relation, I mean the conscious, reflective, subjective self with intentionality is not the conceptual basis of the relation. This relation is rather there, even if one does not conceptually posit oneself as a subject and stand in contrast to another subject or an object. Therefore, this pre-subjective relation is prior to the consciousness of the distinction between self and other and is not formed by separate individual subjects coming together and consciously relating to each other. Therefore, this fundamental, this pre-subjective self is a fundamental ontological condition of the self that is necessarily in relation with others. So this is the relation that we're born in and live in and die in. So we're already there. The witness is there, but not necessarily as this um, unseparated wholeness, but in this relation. And this is something that we don't necessarily uh, consciously relate to, um, but it's, a, it's an ontological condition of the self. And I talk about it this way because um, not saying that it is the Korean way of understanding the self in the Korean society, in Korean society where uh, community is more important than the individual life uh, compared to Europe or some other worlds. But I'm saying that this is, um, another way of understanding self, like just as self as subject is understood as one way of understanding self, not only in the West or in Europe or in whatever, or westernized, modernized world, but, uh, right, but no, but not only in Europe, but like in, in the westernized or modernized world, world, like in Korea as well, you know, we, self is also understood as subject and, but I'm saying that um, this is also another way that could be um, could be applied to, um, maybe not applied to, but that talks about our way of understanding self, like as a human being, not as a Korean, not as a European. And um, I thought of this uh, in the context of um, philosophizing in different languages. And um, so that we can also critically look at the problems of uh, this still ongoing imperialism and colonial, uh, colonization of uh, the ideologies and philosophy and so on and so forth. Um, so, um, This, as um, Professor Gabune uh, introduced, this uh, talk was based on uh, my book. This is the book, if you're interested in it. Uh, and um, 
I'll end here for now and uh, we can discuss together. Thank you. Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay. Should I stop uh, sharing? No, no, Sorry. of course, maybe if you could go back to your to the, the picture of your um, your monograph. Ah, okay. And right. uh, I uh, we still have a couple of of time, so maybe um, I don't know. I I can um, well let's give the um, Maybe just before moving on to the Q&A session, um, I would be really uh, eager to, to know more about this, um, this book. Um, you, you just told me that uh, basically this, this conference is based on this book, but could you um, elaborate a bit? Um, mm -hmm. um, is it based on, um, on your previous uh, PhD dissertation? Or uh, yeah, just I, I would be really eager to know more about this book. No, it's not. It has nothing to do almost okay. with my uh, PhD uh, or what I was doing before this project. Yeah. So this book really was my uh, project in the last three years. Uh, and um, this was something very personal because I'm a Korean philosopher working in Europe. And uh, especially, you know, I'm a so-called uh, German philosophy, uh, like, expert like or you know I'm specialized in German philosophy and especially Heidegger and so on and so forth and then I uh, got to ask myself like uh, what is what is it that exactly that I'm doing in Europe as a Korean philosopher I mean before I was more naive I rather say that I didn't really think about it deeply I just thought oh it's something that we all can do as a human being you know I don't have to be mm -hmm. a German or a French or or Korean or something else, but you know, as long as you're a human being, you can just do this, you can philosophize. And it was just one topic in philosophy that I picked, but mm -hmm. but working, studying and working in Europe, um, I realized that there is some naive aspect of that self-understanding and philosophy, uh, just very realistically, uh, can non-European philosophers have the position that is more than a translator mm -hmm. in the field of not only philosophy but especially philosophy because I also because I'm in the field of philosophy you know can we really function or are we viewed as more than a translator of the western philosophy mm -hmm. to the non-west non-western world um, and I also realized that Yes, because I was in Germany and did everything in German, so it was natural that I did everything in German. But at the same time, I got this impression that the, the philosophical language is German. I mean, at least that's how it was taken mm -hmm. in the field of philosophy, especially in Germany. Oh, yeah, okay, it's in Germany. But even in Korea, uh, German language, especially for the field of um, okay, Western philosophy, it's very important to know the German language, but knowing Korean language doesn't really mean much. Mm -hmm. It almost doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But is that so, really? Because I don't speak German like with my mom to talk about what to eat over dinner or you know, even my own personal identity, you know, something very deep about my self-understanding and identity and so on and so forth. I uh, I speak in Korean, you know, with other Korean people. And we can talk about pretty deep uh, fundamental philosophical stuff, you know, in Korean. But it's not really taken as a serious philosophical language tool. Um, and why is that? No. Right? And that was the problematic or the starting point of this whole project. And some of uh, the audience here um, heard this story before, but I had a chance to give a lecture in Madagascar, um, was it four years ago? Um, and I gave a public lecture uh, to college students in Antananarivo, um, the capital of Madagascar. Mm -hmm. 
and it was on German idealism. And I basically explained what I explained to you today briefly, uh, subjectivity and self and so on and so forth. And I was trying to explain the process of understanding uh, I as subject. And, you know, this, in this ich gleich ich, you know, system, like I equals I. And this uh, this comes with this self-objectifying process because I have to see myself as I, you know? Mm -hmm. And then as I was explaining this, this was translated into uh, Malagasy, the native language of Madagascar. And they were like, oh, wait, wait, uh, this is really just impossible to translate. And I was like, what do you mean? Just translate like word by word. I mean, word to word. I know it's difficult. But, and they were like, no, it's difficult because we don't have the same concepts uh, or linguistic mm -hmm. elements of subject and object. And uh, we don't think that way. And I was like, what do you mean you don't think that way? You cannot think like without that because you are the subject you think and there's an object and blah, blah, blah. And then they were like, no. And I was really challenged as a philosopher. And uh, I myself is, I myself am also uh, non-European and Korean language doesn't necessarily function exactly the same way as European languages do. But as a philosopher, I'm supposed to uh, be questioning everything and uh, be like critically thinking and um, doubting, but I never doubted, you know, that there are other languages or other ways of understanding self and even like the way of thinking. So from there, I asked myself these questions and that's how this all started. And I got to, um, I got to realize that there are some interesting things like our husband, which is very bizarre. But instead of just thinking of that, like, oh, bizarre, or a oh, very exotic, I wanted to approach it philosophically. And um, this is the first fruit, I would say, of this project. And this is an ongoing project that I still don't know exactly how to, and I like to share this with many as possible, uh, so that because it's not only Korean, but many other languages also apply. And not only uh, the language, but just different groups, not only linguistic, cultural groups, but within Korea too, and within France, within Germany too. You know, there are different uh, groups with different ideas or ways of living and understanding self. So we, this is an attempt. Uh, or like um, experimental project to find a way to uh, to deal with these things philosophically. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be the, the next field of investigation? I mean, do you want to, would it be related with the, the Korean language? Uh, like yeah, I mean, uh, it would uh, go on but I'd like to collaborate with other philosophers and not only philosophers, but other people who speak uh, other languages. And I think it's important not only for the field of philosophy, but also for really everyone because it's, it's related to our understanding of self, our self understanding mm -hmm. um, so that we don't really think of this as the only absolute reference of self-understanding, but because if you're not, for example, an American person, uh, native English speaker or German, then you're always nothing but a translator, no matter what you do, even, even, um, even concerning your self-understanding of your own self like you have to turn off like or erase a huge part of yourself to in order to understand yourself like within this framework that was provided uh, by a certain group of people mm -hmm. i see it's quite interesting because i had one um, one of my students who came to my place and because i was explaining his concept of Udi. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I think it was a Korean grammar class, and she told me um, it's it's a Flemish student. She told me so, that I'm sorry. It's a Flemish, um, uh -huh. and so she she uh, she she was from the uh, the French the sorry the Dutch speaking part of Belgium, and uh, she told me that in her dialect. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they used uh, um, something like or father or dear body in Dutch. As ah, in oh, really? It was also extremely um, a surprise because, um, yeah, it was the first time I, I, I heard the story. And yeah, she told me, yeah, in fact, I don't know if it's really stand out, but in my, in my village, basically, we used to use this or in, instead of my. So oh, I see. It was extremely interesting. Exactly. I mean, that was my point too. I think it's not only Korean or not only Asian, but even in Europe, I mean, there are a lot of cases, or even in English. I mean, you say our mom and or, um, you know, our someone, you can yeah. say that even yeah. to an unrelated yeah. uh, person. Yeah. And that's not uncommon. It's just that I, I get this impression that we're so much under this uh, roof or this, you know, framework mm -hmm. of thinking of self and other that even if we think differently and live differently and interact with other people differently, when we talk about it theoretically, we don't talk, we don't know how to talk about it differently. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, that, And that was the point of this project and my talk today. Thank you very much for this uh, very uh, yeah thought-provoking uh, presentation. Thank I you. will. Uh...